Hello everybody, this is St. George's again and uh, it's Thursday and uh, we are coming to, uh, to worship for noonday. And uh, if you want to follow this, you'll find it on page 138 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll begin with some silence. If praise, you servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. O oh God, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you, for in returning on rest we shall be saved, and quietness and trust shall be our strength. I'm going to read to you a short passage from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, and beginning at the first verse. And getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to them, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowds saw it, they were afraid and they gloried God, glorified God, who was given such authority to men. This is a, a sort of the shortest version of a story which is in the other Gospels, and it's a story which uh, is fascinating because it's got so many uh, textures and so many layers. Here is a young man who is paralyzed some way, probably from the, the, the waist downwards, whether that was because of disease or whether it was because of an accident, uh, we don't know. All we know is that his friends brought him to Jesus and uh, when they couldn't get into the house where Jesus was and where Jesus was speaking, gathered by gathering with a crowd gathered around him, uh, they went to the staircase which runs up the edge of the house and then stood on the flat roof and pulled aside the uh, roofing materials which were sort of like reeds and thatch and things like that and let the young man down in front of Jesus eager that Jesus would heal him. So Jesus looks at the man and says my son your sins are forgiven. At that point the uh, scribes and the Pharisees, the official religious people, the ones in the first century equivalent of a clerical shirt, uh, they began to complain. This is not appropriate for, a, for anyone to say those things. That, that, that it belongs to God to forgive sins. And Jesus understood precisely what was going on and turned to them and said, I, you know, I understand what you're saying. I know what you're, know what you're about, but... Uh, What's it easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or take up your bed and walk. So he said to the young man, take up your bed and walk. And so he picked up his bedding roll, put it under his arm and walked out. And that uh, really uh, led to an awful lot of uh, interesting conversations and uh, enthusiasm in the area. What isn't seen in this story is that Jesus actually is making huge claims about himself. Which is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or take up your bed and walk? 
And they had said, well, it's only God's prerogative to forgive sins. And actually what Jesus was doing was claiming to be God. He forgave the man's sins, and not only were his sins forgiven, but he then said, take up your bed and walk, and his body was healed. That was an affirmation, not only that he has the power to forgive sin, but that actually something was happening, something was being forgiven. I always think that this young man had probably been fooling around with his friends and had uh, been badly injured as a result of that, which so often happens with young people. And that here was Jesus giving him, as it were, a second chance in his life. And he went away, perhaps, with his sins forgiven. And we can't tell, but we don't know, but perhaps it was that he became one of those enthusiastic followers of Jesus in Galilee and in the founding of the early church. We'll only discover that when we get to heaven. Let's thank God that he is in Christ and Christ's death and resurrection able to forgive our sins. Let us thank God for calling us to be his servants. And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. A prayer of mine, which a prayer from the scriptures, which is one of the favorites of mine. Oh, sorry, from the prayer book, not the scriptures. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but thee, we being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Saviour, at this hour you hung upon the cross stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved for your mercy's sake. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.